are broadcasting live. Accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners hang out. <laughs> Hanging out on Google+, Plus, YouTube, and everywhere else where you can stream a live video feed. And we already started in the pre-game show <laughs> talking about, of course, the Sleater Conference, which I just got back from, as well as, more specifically, some of the major focus of the conference, which, of course, was cloud accounting and some of the solutions we looked at. So we're talking about QuickBooks Online, we're talking about Zero, we're talking about Wave, and we're talking about Intact. And uh, I'm actually logged into my Zero account now, which I've created, but I haven't put anything in there, so I'm going to screen share it. But I could have sworn there has to be a way besides the bank feed where I can go in and enter a check or record a deposit. You just have to do it the long way. You have to make an invoice, you have to create an AP, and then you have to pay it. So uh, at least that's what I found. You can't do journal entries? You can do journal journal entries, yes. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. Uh-uh. No. That's horrible. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you see where Bill.com and uh, Zero are going to be integrating? Yeah, saw, they eventually saw... announced that actually during the conference. Did they have any more details on that, or just that it was happening by okay. I think, the 29th or something? Just in time for Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> oh, trick or treat! Exactly. <laughs> Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Tina. You look wonderful. I love Thank your new you. do. Yeah, I went a little bit extreme. I wanted it off so bad that I told her to take it shorter than I thought. <laughs> my husband would like. He actually likes it, but my neck is so cold right now. <laughs> so you just have it... to like go chic and, and wear a scarf. Yeah, I'm going to let it grow out a little bit and then just keep it kind of shoulder length. But I like it short. I like short hair. And with a three-year-old, it's so much easier to have short hair, I have to tell you. Oh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking about hacking mine off because I have a three-month-old puppy who loves to pull my hair. Oh yeah, but you live God. in extreme weather territory, so I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I freeze anyway, so yeah. it's like, ugh. Mm -hmm. so sorry, Seth. Hi. I said, sorry, <laughs> Seth. <laughs> no, no problem. We can talk about your hair if you want. This could be a Tina's hair episode of Account Bookkeepers and Business Owners. Yeah. Well, we figured we'd give you a couple of minutes to go poke around and not put you on the spot. <laughs> no, by all means, and I, you know, I love being put on the spot. Um, I took 14 inches off, just so you know. Wow! Wow, wow that's a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. My headache instantly went away too when I stood up because <laughs> I got thick, heavy hair. So you know, yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting to me that there's no way in zero to just write a check and then. Yeah. Like, I haven't really poked around in here much, and I need to because I need to start doing videos on this. But I guess I'm wondering, like, okay, where do I even go to enter a bill? Accounts payable. I'm yeah. looking at accounts. i got to bring mine up because I actually played with it a lot. There it is. So, new oh, invoice. Man. Oh, that's right. They call payables invoices. That's where a lot of Americans are getting confused. Yeah. We well, think and that's invoice the, other... is the uh, revenue generating vehicle. Yeah, and that's the other side is um, because of uh, some of them being in New Zealand and some being in Canada, the terminology is very different. Yeah, they call it debtors for uh, customers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very much uh, that's a British thing as well. So. Not to be confused well, with that's surprising being in New Zealand. Well, some like some like they're saying ditters, you know, but uh, when you listen to, listen to the tape. And hopefully your debtors don't become dead beats. <laughs> it's a bit of a derogatory term for somebody who owes you a bit of money when they, they are going to pay you. Yeah. So, and then, of course, I don't see where to go to actually pay the bill. So I guess, and then, well, and then I guess it goes, well, yeah, because normally I would want to initiate a payment through my accounting software, and then the payment goes through, and then I match it up or bring it into my banking or match it up with what's already in my banking. And the reconcile, function, the reconcile function of that was really, really cool. Because I, I mean, I, I was really seriously moving towards that. So I went ahead and I pulled in all my business accounts into it to try and sync it with the online banking and import it and categorize it. And that was really slick. It was so cool. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, that part I've seen, and it is really cool, provided you're going to do the bank feed thing, which, of course, goes back to the question of why wouldn't your clients want to do that? But before we get to that, my other question is, in terms of the whole receivables and payables cycle, 
I at least need to have a way of entering a bill and initiating the payment through my accounting software. And I, I'm not obviously seeing where that is. Yeah, I have to go back and look because I looked at, I think, four different products this weekend. I'm going to go. Maybe I need to have a new invoice in there. So I'm going to create a new invoice. From Tina Kritzer. On ten twenty six. Due on ten twenty seven. You can attach a file. That's kind of cool that that's built in. For a million dollars. Yeah, you can actually, I think, take a picture on this one and attach it. It's There's some really cool functionality of this. All right, I need a new item. Now it says add inventory item, but I assume I can put a service item here as well. Yes. I should share my screen to at least make it somewhat interesting while I'm doing this, huh? That's a good idea. Wait, All right, wait, hold wait. on. Let me go share my screen here. And Bruce said he might not be able to be here because he might be saving a cat. Aww. So, because somebody, I guess, uh, very early this morning or late last night, I guess, reached out to him because you know he does the whole pet rescue thing. <clears throat> so uh, he, if he's not here, it means he's out saving a cat. Oh, good. Finding Kitties deserve to be rescued. Yeah. Right before Catterday. Okay, so put a quick description. Hi, Mom. Her purchases. Oh, I'm setting up the item here. That's the item description. Bookkeeping, services. Hey, Seth, can you um, click on your thumbnail so it stays up when there's other activity, please? You bet. I know I can do it, but people in the audience can. Now, can I add a new account right in here? Um, that was the part that I was kind of like not real happy about. You had to go to the chart of accounts to add accounts. Ack! That was where I kind of went, no, I'm not happy about that. No, that's really bad. But you know what? If you click, um, there's... Uh, there's a place where you can give feedback about your experience, and I actually got a response, um, I think within, it was less than two days, I want to say it was like one day, um, about that feature, and they're saying you can do it in other areas, but um, not in uh, wherever I was, I can't remember. Great, so I need a list of the areas I can do it in, so I know when I don't have to think ahead and when I do. Yeah, and I didn't like that, because I think, you know, it's intuitive enough that they should be able to allow it in all areas if it's in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But you ever hey, use I'm not the a programmer. Help? Have you seen the Help Center? You ever use the Help, help Center? Help Center is awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's that's, actually helpful. That's why I didn't like Wave Accounting. Their Help Center was almost non-existent. Yeah, I had the same experience. I think Cashew was okay, but it wasn't like my favorite. Zero is really, it's got some potential, I think. They need to do some more work to make me happy. But All right, so bookkeeping services, a description. For a stuff I do that I charge for. I like that description. An error occurred. Please enter a unique code. Oh, it's required. It doesn't say required. Yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah. Oops. I so, put a little asterisk. Asterisk. Yeah. Well, at least it's highlighted it. Tell you but, missed that bit. Yeah, and you'll know in the future when you're setting them up. So if you look at your chart, they do everything by numbers, and it's sorted by numbers at the moment. So, I hate that. but you can sort it by different columns. So if you prefer it to be sorted by alphabet, you can also do that, or sort it by category. You can do that, which is kind of nice. It gives you some options. Right. Okay. Now going back to this, and this is where I keep kind of getting confused. Oh, Gina, saying are you hanging out? Yeah. Where are you, Gina? Coming where up are you? Let me invite you in. Gina, hang out. Go back to zero. Now, this is for entering a bill, too, which kind of makes me think, okay, why was I entering an item? What if I just want to enter a bill for an expense? That counts payable? Right. Well, that's where I was when it started asking me to create an item. So let's uh, go to new, new invoice. Okay, so again, this is going to be from Tina Kritzer. 10-26-12, Total, a million dollars. Wow. I wish I could pay that bill. 
<laughs> Things are definitely looking up here in the Kritzer household, but I can tell you it ain't looking that good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amelia, uh, description. Stuff and junk. <laughs> and you know. Yeah. That's good. Quantity, four of those at a price of... So I'm going to put the amount in here. I wonder if it's going to update my total at the top. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So I need 50 of these. I got my bookkeeping services account. Gina, we're looking at zero right now. Oh, great. I'm so glad I'm able to join. So let's see if I can divide the quantity by the unit price. Do the quick math like QuickBooks lets me do. Divided by, no, I cannot. So I have to go over to Excel and say, what's a million divided by 50 to 20,000? I'm not that good with numbers. Me neither. <laughs> That's why I use tools. I used to be, but man, I can't anymore. <laughs> Okay, so now let me approve it. Don't you have to have an item? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I do. Yep. No, it says my accounts no. are locked by my financial advisor up until December 31st, 2012. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Who's my financial advisor? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> I thought you were. <laughs> so did I. It's God. <laughs> what did you set your, your date for? I was just like today and tomorrow, just because I'm just trying to play around. When you, um, I think when you open up the account, you have to set a. You know what? I might have set it for 2013 because I think my actual intention was to start running my own books parallel using zero just to play with it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking you're hitting right now. So change the date to 2013 instead of 12. Yeah, doing that now. Okay, and then so here, once, yeah, so that makes sense now. Once the bill is in, then I can add a payment. All right, it looks like here I can choose pay by check in case I actually handwrite a check. Now, I wonder, can I print checks from here? How does it know what, to, what account to code it to, though? Well, I already coded the bill to the account, so it's just going to pay the bill. Oh. It's going to credit the bank account and debit accounts payable. Now, if I had more than one bank account, I'd imagine it had, yeah, you paid from right here. Mm -hmm. Nerd operating, right? But you didn't have an item in the bill, did you? No. I didn't. So is it going to default to accounts payable automatically, or? I actually chose an account bookkeeping services. Okay. Which actually, now that I think about it, I set that up as an income account. I want to set that up as like a direct labor because this is for the expense side. So let's see what that looks like if I go to my chart of accounts. And let's see if I can change the account. So bookkeeping services, bookkeeping next. No, nope, I meant to the expenses now, previous. Where my it, would not, it would be nice if you could just have a, a search window. You could just type and it would uh, look for the context and find it. Yeah. Let me just show like 200 items per page. This way everything's here. Oh, that's weird. It's way down here. You know why? Because I didn't assign it a number. Aha. So I have to choose name. So this is going to take some getting used to because, you know, if we're used to QuickBooks, we're used to it sort of automatically sorting by account type, like assets first, then liabilities, and within each section right. by name. So this is going to take a little getting used to. Yeah. Because this is just going to be straight up by account name regardless of type. <laughs> can you sort it by account type? You can sort it by account type, but then within that, I don't know if it's going to be numerical by code or mm. based on, uh, you know, the name. So and it might maybe it remembers what you last sorted by. So I'll look at that in a minute. But also I want to change this. I want to see if it'll let me change the account type. And so and I don't see like cost of goods sold. Direct costs. 
I guess that's going to be changing that account type will affect all non-published reports for past future dates. That's fine. The code it looks like needs to be an expense. So if revenues are normally five, cost of goods sold. What do you guys normally use for cost of goods sold? Revenues are normally in the four series. Cost of goods sold is well, expenses are normally five. I guess it's still a four because it's like a contra income account. I don't use numbers. Well, they're kind of forcing you to, I think, now because I'm, of the way that it's it worked from what I see so far. Does yeah. it have sub accounts where you could have like things under cost of goods sold that would roll I don't up? see a way to add a sub account. Nope. The only way you can do it is with your sorting. So if you wanted to do like you know two hundred dot five, it would be you know under the two hundred sort of, but not mm. a sub account. Oh. Huh. Man, we have all gotten spoiled by QuickBooks, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> well, you're so used to the way something works, so you have to kind of divorce yourself from that thinking. I think when I was playing with Cashew, you could actually add an account on the fly, and it was a little bit easier to maneuver that way. But it had some minuses on the other side too. So they all have different functionality that are goods and bads, and it's whatever you want to work with in their parameters. So. Right. Because I, I, you know, I don't mind using new programs. It's cool by me. I mean, it's yeah, it's just, just a learning curve. Yeah, it's just a learning curve. So you have to get used to what does this do, you know, or what does what, what am I used to that this doesn't do, right? And then there's probably going to be some like I know when you use the banking feed, it is super nice, you know. Yeah. That's where I get why they call it beautiful accounting because it really is beautiful the way it makes it so easy to kind of match things up and. Well, add things in. It's kind of after the fact coding of the account too. You know, you can write the check and or do the debit and then code it when it comes in as opposed to QuickBooks where you just code it before it goes out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So all right, so now let's go back to accounts payable. Awaiting payment one. You know, this is interesting, Seth. I noticed that you don't have an advisor tab on yours. I'm wondering if you're not an administrator level. Because I have an advisor on mine, which allows me to do, like, uh, manual journal entries and some other kind of stuff. I know I had my accountant's kind of dashboard thing that I was able to access and add clients at one point. Hmm. Yeah, see? Here's my accountant kind of profile. Hmm. I can add organizations, you know, for clients. My subscription says practice. And so that is what you are doing, practicing. <laughs> so if you go to um, your settings tab, Seth, and go into general settings and users, what does it look like there? Is there a different login? The practice settings? Yeah, which settings? Okay, so from um, from your uh, zero uh, company account. You mean where I am right now? Go into Nerd Enterprises again. Okay. Sorry. I was on my other screen looking at what I was trying to talk you through and didn't see where you were. And then go over to Settings tab. General Settings. Users. And what what is your set your standard? You need to change that. That's why it's not showing. Bastards. So you, yeah, I had to. Do I that. am a financial advisor. Yeah, that's what I had to do too in order to get more more power. We need someone with a little more power. So now you're going to be able to, I think, maneuver a little bit easier. Not a whole lot. I mean, it gives you more options. You won't get some of the screaming things going. You can't do this. <laughs> that's really funny. Okay, so now let me go to accounts payable. So under the advisor tab is where you get your journal entries, just FYI. Hey, look, I got a new tab. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do stuff. I like, anybody here used to drink tab cola? Oh, I, I hated did. that. I did. Oh, Ugh. nasty. Do they still make that stuff? Yes, they do. <laughs> And this is cool. They showed this to me when I was there when they <clears throat> gave me a run through. Excuse me. <clears throat> you can add a plan date, like when I plan to pay it, and it will actually plot your cash flow out accordingly. Oh, nice. 
So that's kind of cool. All right, so if I want to make a payment, I have not selected any items to pay. Well, let's do that. Pay by check, pay by batch check. payment, create a file to upload to your bank. That's weird. Upload to your bank. How does that work? Well, I guess that's where the bank feed has to be set up. So then they'll upload the payment instruction, I'm guessing. Yeah. I think that's the case. Probably gonna yell at me because I haven't set up any bank feeds. I think that's where basically you upload it, and then the bank know, and then the bank knows which ones to, or which ones you can pay out of the bank, I believe. So you like import it into your bill pay? Um, I'm not that. Sh I'm not okay. sure. Let me I'm gonna see where I might have set that whole date thing, so I can change that. Might it be financial settings or organization settings? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, what? The date. Oh, the date. Uh, I forget where it is. It's not in the organization settings. Yes, yeah, financial settings such as tax period. So period lock date. I locked it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> And I just noticed I have this set on cash basis. Let's go to accruals. I like that. It's accrual. It's not accrual basis. It's accruals. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I have accruely hair. <laughs> All right. So now let's go to accounts payable. Awaiting payment. Tina Kritzer, one million. It's a good thing I don't actually have an account linked up. <laughs> well, darn. <laughs> What's that just story? blew your whole weekend, huh, T? <laughs> yeah, I guess we're not going to like Tahoe or anything fun. <laughs> ah. All right, now let me see if I can edit the invoice and change the date to today. So let's see if I can do the old period trick. <laughs> I can, that's good news. <clears throat> so yeah, it looks like you're going to really be dependent on having the bank feeds linked up and created. So now let's go back to that question, Tina. Why won't your clients do that? Um, my clients are uh, very unusual <laughs> and a little bit high maintenance. So um, there's a couple of them that don't have a problem with it. Um, and they actually allow me to have access to it. They've created a user so that I can go in and not have to touch anything that I don't need to. But um, I've got some other ones that they basically print off the statement for me into a PDF and then send it to me either via Dropbox or email. And then I've got another client who currently I just started with. He's marking up his clients' phys his uh, statements physically this weekend and color coding everything, and he's going to priority mail it to me. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of work for your side, though. Yeah. I, we go back to the, my suggestion about the letter that you want to send to your clients to switch them to the cloud? Yes. Which, do you want me to read it out loud? Yes, please. Dear client, move to the cloud or I will punch you in the throat. <laughs> Love your... <laughs> Yeah, that'll get received really well. Mm -hmm. I actually got one of my guys. I got one of my guys to go. I got. A, I sent him an email this morning. He's going to be incorporating. Um, he's got a Droid phone, which was the other reason I liked Zero because they interface with the Droid app. Um, and one of the other ones, I think it was Kashu, only does iPhone or iPad. Um, I need flexibility with my guys. So he's all over QuickBooks Online. So he's going to start as of 2013. Cool. Can you, Can you offer you them uh, zero that they were explaining to me when I was at their booth in the conference and they gave me the demo is that it's really meant to do a daily reconciliation and as accountants it's meant for us to kind of put that process back into the hands of the client mm -hmm. so that it becomes the client's responsibility to manage their baking, make sure all the transactions are being added in to their register. And so then my concern was, okay, but how about a true reconciliation report where I can match up with the bank balance? And the thing is, because they're pulling from the bank, from the bank's feed, they know exactly what the balance is at, according to the, you know, the per bank balances on any given date. So all you do is run a reconciliation report and you put in whatever your statement's cutoff date is, and it knows that balance. And he showed me, it gives you a beautiful reconciliation report that unlike QuickBooks, actually does it both ways. It goes from books to bank and from bank back to books, which is nice. 
What's the um, website on that again? US dot, my eyes are failing me. Dot intact dot com. Now, now I want to look at intact for a minute. Because this, you know, it's funny. I kept hearing that intact is very complicated, very complex. And when um, Amy Vetter gave her demo of it during the conference, I actually did not feel that I would agree with those statements. But I haven't, of course, dug into it myself. But from what she demoed, it seemed pretty simple and straightforward how to use. It's kind of an upgrade from QuickBooks, isn't it? I mean, it's more a lot for bigger companies. It's supposed to be more sophisticated, from what I understand. More um, mid-market, I understand. What? More mid-market. It's more mid-market, but I'll tell you one real compelling thing, that at the end of the conference, or near the end, Doug had a panel. He had Amy from Intact. He had Kevin Kern from QuickBooks Online. He had the uh, CEO of Wave Accounting. His name is Scott. I forget his last name. Uh -huh. And then he had, of course, uh, Jamie Sutherland from Zero. All up on you know stage and you know they each talked about their product and then we got to ask questions. So I asked, do any of your products have or have plans to have the ability to create calculated custom fields? And no. Amy was the only one who said that her product Intact does already have that. The others said it's Kevin Kern from QuickBooks. Online was funny. He's like, can I get a lifeline here? And he was referring to the other QuickBooks, you know, online staff that were in the audience. <laughs> um, and they said that they can't say exactly when or exactly what it'll be, but that it is something that's on their radar, it's on their list, and they're working on it. Excuse me. Um, but, and, and Jamie Sutherland, I don't remember if he said whether or not they have it in the works at all, to be honest. And Scott flat out, I think, said no from Wave Accounting. But Amy from Intact said, yeah, it's there. So that by itself makes me very curious to check that because I get so many requests from people for you know being able to calculate sales commissions in their accounting software mm -hmm. and if this can do it then uh, that might be a reason on its own for a lot of people to switch so it's basically a field for a report it's a calculated field on report as opposed oh. to the database the way I framed the question was yeah was you know can I add a calculated field so that if it's not native to the software I could add two fields one would be a, a, a data driven field where it's just holding the commission rate but right. then the other one would be a custom calculated field where I could say take this commission rate and multiply it by the total of this report which of course that report would be the sales by sales rep for a given date range and that way it can at least give me the calculation right there of what the sales commission is now then, of course, I'd love to be able to take it a step further and click a button and say, okay, now enter this as a bill payable to the sales rep, but that might be asking too much. So it's kind of, so it'd be like uh, expanded reports has that kind of functionality where you can have like if-then-else expressions for a calculated field and, and that yeah, kind of thing. I play with expanded reports. I haven't looked at that yet, but it sounds... Yeah, that's basic, yeah it's basically you can do a lot of, um, it's got a lot more robust functions. It's more Excel-like in the, in the functions. And you can do if then else type calculations, and um, so it's it's. I think of it more like an Excel or an Access report where you actually do the the the, the formulas, and it's based on the formula. Right. These guys are in the U.S. They're in like the South Bay here. And tack, yeah. I didn't know. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just um, I don't see a free trial. It looks like I can view a demo. I would love to be able to get a free trial, but maybe I'll have to ask Doug to nudge them to get us a free trial so I can play with this. And or do they have an advisor program? I think they do because if I remember correctly when Amy was describing the product and doing her overall demo, uh, if, I, if I understood correctly, if I remember correctly, I think this product is really, it's sad. I got, actually, no, she said there were different platforms through which you can approach this product, and there was definitely one that was geared towards accountants, you know, okay. where the accountant sets it up, the accountant gets certain pricing, and then it's our choice whether we want to build that back to our clients, mark it up, you know, or just bill it back at cost or however we want to do that. And then they have a whole other portal for clients who are going directly to use their software. And they all have that. Zero, when I talked to them, you know, when I looked at their pricing, it's basically going to be, I mean, there's a like a $19 a month plan, which gets you like five invoices a month. It, good luck finding a client that only does five of them. Yeah. <laughs> so basically at that point, you're gonna, you, we're all going to do $29 a month. And there's a more expensive plan, which the biggest difference is the multi-currency feature. So that's only going to be necessary for people who are doing international business. Right. And that one is, I think, $39 a month instead of $29. So most of us for zero are going to be in that $29 plan. 
And they, it seems to me that their intention is for us to just sort of absorb that cost and build it into our billing because we can add the clients. And for each new client you add, you're going to be paying another $29 a month, but you're going to be charging the client at least $29 a month for your service. That's the thinking anyway. Yeah. And then well, the thing about the thing about zero is that you can have unlimited uh, users. Yeah. As opposed to QuickBooks online where it's kind of uh, yeah. So and that was the other thing I was going to mention is once I have a client set up, I can if that client has 5 employees who they want to be able to access the books, then I can add all 5. Really? Hey Rod, uh, sorry to hear your son's not feeling well. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got to run. Bye. Right. Take care. Good, Good luck. luck. Take care. Ooh. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, you know, then going back to, you know, Tina and her clients, and, and the reason I'm sort of picking on you, Tina, is because I know a lot of people are going to encounter the same, you know, resistance. So, I don't feel picked on at all. I just get special clients, so. Yeah, so. <laughs> and we so all do. have our own special clients, Tina. I have a lot of them. <laughs> no, but we all do, and I think what will happen is, you know, at some point we have to shorten the learning curve for them, and that starts by showing them that, hey, once you, uh, break on through to the other side, as a famous poet once said, um, you'll be able to save so much time and it's going to be so much easier and you'll be able to focus more on the fun part, which is actually managing the business than just doing the grunt work, you know. Tina, do you offer a flat rate or do you do hourly? I do hourly. So, I mean, one th selling point is if you get it down to a nice process, you could do a flat rate and still make more money, you know, by yeah. leveraging the technology. And that might be an attraction to your clients if they can guarantee them a flat rate. Yeah, I'll work on that with this. The one guy I just took on, he's actually a former rocket scientist, which is baffling <laughs> to me. He's so low tech, and he's he's done he does marketing now. Um, but he's an awesome individual, and he's he's really very very cool to talk with. But he's just very low tech when it comes to this stuff. He's on the computer for at least ten hours a day, and he just doesn't want to go online. So he uses paper instead. Well, the the good news is they are lucky they have you, Tina. <laughs> wow. Well, maybe you can get us some GL paper at Staples and just really go backwards. Yeah. <laughs> I bet if you put it on graph paper, he'd understand. Oh, you know it. In a heartbeat, Tina. <laughs> So, but I am going to start probably running my own books, sort of parallel to QuickBooks on zero. And just which way so, are you? Which way are you going to go back? Go from zero to QuickBooks or QuickBooks to zero? What do you mean? When you run parallel. Well, no, I'm just going to treat both, stuff. right? I'm just going to do both. I'm going to keep my QuickBooks going the way I have been, and I'm going to go into zero and set up my bank feeds for real and actually start doing it in both places. Um. Because I just I kind of want to see how it runs. I already know how QuickBooks Online works. Um, so I'm anxious. I just, I'm anxious to hear how the bank feeds do work. What you think of it, Seth? Because um, I'm hearing Zero is so much better than QuickBooks Online yeah, as far seen, as the download amazing. banking. Yeah, I mean, from from what I've seen, it looks amazing, and it's definitely all these cloud-based ones. Uh, certainly, at the outset seem to work better. Even QuickBooks Online works better than QuickBooks for desktop insofar as I don't have to push a button. It just automatically syncs up with the bank once a day. Mm -hmm. You know, when I set up my business on Xero um, to try and mess with it, the, there was only one um, bank feed that I could not get to work and that was for my um, Wells Fargo um, benefit account um, for uh, uh, health savings account and it just couldn't find the account. So it found my business account, but it didn't find my other one. And they have two separate links. You've got one for your Wells Fargo business accounts, and then there's another one for um, the health savings that you have to actually link it to as a different bank entity. And I, so I know I had it set up right, so I need to work with um, Zero on it to see what the deal is. But I have to tell you, their customer service is really, really good. They, they listen to feedback, and they are responsive. You're not getting some sort of like call center in the middle of, I don't know, <laughs> India or wherever it happens to be. No, well, they're out, out of the New United Z States. They're out of New Zealand, so they're a New Zealand based company. So, yeah. if nothing else, they have great accents. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You know what? Yeah. One thing that, um, you know, you, uh, you guys might get the same sort of emails if you've ever 
you know, gone to the website. But the, there's that website out there called My Needs, which is, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, there people put in there, you know, I need a bookkeeper, I need an accountant, or whatever, and you know, it distributes <laughs> out. And we were supposed to sort of uh, pay per uh, referral. <laughs> How, however, um, it I see a lot of these, and a lot of them are all zero. I've got. You know, I'm in the U.S., so to speak, and I have. I'm looking for a bookkeeper to help me with my zero uh, account. So maybe more. There's a lot of people out there must be using this because I hardly see any QuickBooks references. It's all zero references. You know, these are all people all over the U.S. saying, "I want a bookkeeper to help me with zero. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that's why I was telling a few people during the conference that you know, zero is. It's going to be. You're going to start seeing more and more people who. <laughs> Or going to want help, you know, from somebody who knows zero. So, even if you're in love with QuickBooks, if you're an accounting or bookkeeping professional, I think at this point it's probably fair to say, this is my opinion, that you almost have to get to know this product and become familiar with it, or you're going to lose out on possibly having some clients. Plus, they have a lot of uh, APIs. I mean, they've got a lot of add-ins that you can uh, link in with zero. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one for Nancy. She can start developing, or her husband can. Yep. <laughs> oh, she's shaking her head. No. <laughs> no. She's looking towards retirement. <laughs> yes, she is. More so today than ever. Would you believe it's 70 degrees here the oh, end wow. of October? Really? That's just weird. Well, just wait, Nancy. Wait until after the end of this weekend. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, we're oh, supposed like to have a hurricane. Worse yeah. than Irene. Yes, yeah, so I heard. <laughs> You've got hurricanes. We've got cold weather now in Texas. It was, it was pretty chilly this morning. At 7 o'clock this morning, I took Max out and sat on the deck in just a, a long-sleeved shirt with my cup of coffee, and I was barefoot. And it was. It, ben came out, and he said to me, he said, My God, are you all right? <laughs> I said, It's summer. <laughs> Indian summer. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yes, Larry. I remember Irene. Oh, good Lord. That was horrible. Yeah, they say perfect storm. Here in Pennsylvania, we're going to get hit. We're in the center. Um, so it could move more north, south, east, west, and we'll still get something. <laughs> but I, I think I feel a, a, a sick day coming on for the rest of the day. <laughs> sick day? I need a sick month. So, oh, so tell Seth, me about it. So, Seth, what stood out in your mind at the uh, QuickBooks or the Sleater Group? Any particular themes or um, presentations? Um, you know, there was that social media presentation that just blew me away. It was just amazing. <laughs> Is that the one you did? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I like the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Did you, oh, you said you watched the video? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, that was a lot of fun. I got a lot of good feedback on that. And then um, it was funny because I sort of uh, roped Ruth Perryman into doing the second social media one on the applications. And, you know, at first she, she could have said to me that she doesn't like to talk. And she, really, and, and, you know, and she blamed Doug. She says, this, Doug finally found a way to sort of coax me into speaking. I guess she doesn't like speaking in front of people. But I emailed her last night to thank her for doing it. And I honestly felt that the audience was extremely receptive. Everybody really likes her. I mean, it's like, what's not to like? I don't know if you've ever talked to her, but she's just a lovely person. So she um, she wrote back and thanked me for sort of coaxing her into doing it and, and admitted that she enjoyed it a lot more than she would have expected. So I thought that was great. But, Seth, I think you did a wonderful job. You stepped right in like you were doing that all your life. Thank you. Um, but in, in, in all seriousness, going back to Dennis's question, um, obviously what stood out was the whole theory, the whole thing of the cloud. Um, Dan Wernickoff from Intuit gave a keynote in which that was the whole theme of his keynote. It was very compelling. Of course, he was sort of preaching to the choir because that audience was all people like us who tend to be the early adopters who jump on these things. But I think it was important to reinforce how important it's going to be for us to go back and convey this to our clients. And that was the, es the essential message. But he was speaking to the practitioners specifically in the context that, 
you know, of course, the cloud has given us the opportunity to go well beyond the immediate 50 to 75 mile geographic radius mm -hmm. that many of us got accustomed to for a long, long time. And, I, you know, again, for us, I think that's a no-brainer. That's been the case for quite some time now. Um, and, of course, I use that in my own presentation to say, okay, he's right. You know, we can go well beyond that, um, uh, that, that uh, radius. But the question is, how do we reach the people? And, of course, the answer is social media. So, well, but, it's, it strikes me is that this combined with, like, Google Hangouts, it can kind of simulate a person, you know, more of a personal connection with, you know, remote clients where mm -hmm. you're not just, you know, there's a face and a voice that you can attach to what was doing your books, you know. Right, right. Yeah, there's so much video technology coming out. And he always talks about technology futures. You know, what's going to happen in the future of technology. And he talked about how the two main things are going to be your iTalk and Skype from Microsoft in terms of, you know, what people are going to be using to, um, you know, to communicate online with one another, and especially where we're talking about video conferencing. So, you know, those are the two major products that he talked about, you know, and we're going to want to use that more and more. I can't tell you how many times I've had clients who were resistant to the idea of working remotely. And so I said, look, just try it. Just try it once. If you hate it that much, we can always go back to the way you were doing things before. And, you know, so they'll reluctantly agree when I pressure them a little bit like that, but I've never had somebody actually try it with me and then say, yeah, I liked it better the other way. In fact, every single time they've said, Seth, I'm glad you pushed me a little bit. You know, and sometimes I think that's really what it takes is we just have to give our clients a little bit of a push because they're scared and we have to assure them, look, I've done this. I've already tried it, you know. Trust me when I tell you that it's working and it's working better than than the old method, the way you were doing it before. You know, it's just it's just getting over that learning curve, and like that's what Doug talks about with that whole crossing the chasm something. There's that gap where people get there and they stop, and they're like, "Oh, I don't know, I, I don't, I, I can't do this. I'm afraid. My security of my data, or, you know, the learning curve. It's going to take more time at first. And it's it's like, yes, it's going to take more time at first. You're going to have to learn something new." And that's why I think as we get older, especially, we have more and more of that inertia. <laughs> you know, it's just that. It's resistance to change. But once we accept it and adopt it, we're always thankful that we did because we realize how much better it's been in our lives, literally. Well, uh, I actually charge a travel charge. So that's a way that I get people over that. You don't have the travel charge if we do it virtually. I and, knew and that they seem too. to respond to that. Yeah. Hey, a uh, quick question. Uh, sorry, I was going to not talk about technology. Um, has anybody, well, you guys have been looking at the 2013 QuickBooks for a while, um, at least it, since uh, in its beta stages, we've been testing it and now it's out. <laughs> but is anybody uh, running uh, Windows 8 and QuickBooks? No, but they talked about that a little bit at the conference. Mm. Uh, the reason being is I'm just installing a Windows 8 server um, today, and I, I'm going to do some testing. I want to see what happens, but I want to. Do, you, do you have a final release, Adrian? Or of the Win Windows 8 server? No, I'm. I, I just downloaded an ISO um, from uh, Microsoft Developers. Okay. Uh, so that's going. That, that's going on now, and um, I. I mean, with with the idea to run, it's going to run under a virtual machine. Uh, so it's a VM. It's going to be a VM server, uh, rather under a VM server. But I want to run QuickBooks on it. So the idea is to see how it performs, because uh, I've got some clients out there that are going to be moving to Windows 8 on their clients. So I'm just wondering how if anybody had tried it under Windows 8. I I have a a, a Windows 8 virtual machine um, that I installed the beta of 2013 on. It's okay. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not. It, there's issues, um, mm -hmm. and even into it says it's going to be like R4. Whenever R4 is going to be released, before they're going to say yay or nay. Uh. Um, I, you know, I mean, it's. I mean, we all love technology, and we're all geeky, but you know, early adopters always are the 
like on the never mind the leading edge. Sometimes we're on the bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's. It, I wasn't happy overall with performance. Mhm. Mm okay. Well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll know in a couple of days, uh, and over the weekend, I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll bash on it and see what happens. But well, what do you mean exactly when you say you weren't happy with performance? Was it running slow or just the way you... I mean, because from what I saw when they were demoing it, Randy Johnson was demoing it during the conference, it seemed like the only real difference in the background, it's just like Windows 7, but now your start menu has that very mobile app-looking kind of interface where you can, you know, and, and uh, frankly, I don't know that I love it. You know, I, I'm not really motivated at this point to even try Windows 8 yet. But so, Nancy, what do you mean specifically when you say performance? Well, I mean, I I don't know if it was like just because it was uh, on a VM and not a, a real machine. But I mean, I, I set it up so that it was like the the VM had like the max of of resources. Um, QuickBooks was really slow. Hmm. I mean, really slow. Okay, so QuickBooks was slow on Windows 8, but then yeah. to qualify that, you're saying you're not sure if that was because it was on the virtual machine or if it was but actually because of Windows 8. But, but if you were comparing it against a, a, a Windows 7 virtual machine running uh, the software and you know versus the Windows 8 version running the software on VM, it was it was still slower. Really? Um, because this was my big desktop, and it was like there's you know there there's no way that I'm just you know gonna even install a beta version of QuickBooks on my working machine. Did that once, lost everything. Um, lesson learned, hard way. Um, so I, I did. I set up a two VMs, one running Windows Seven, one running Windows Eight. My desktop is is a powerhouse. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, um, a two terabyte drive, and I don't think I've used even a third or even a quarter of my disk space. So I, I allocated a lot of resources to mm -hmm. both VMs, and on Windows 8, QuickBooks was way slower to load. Um, more inclined to do the old Windows Vista not responding crap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was just, it was like, oh man, not that again. It, you know, and each, each VM, it was like, it was just the operating system and QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I had all this feather stuff that was using resources. Um, the other thing, you know, Windows 8, it, it may be fine on a tablet or on a touch screen, but it's really not designed for a mouse. That's my concern with it. Mm -hmm. Well, don't they have functionality to change that interface yeah. to look the old way? Well, you can just minimize that start window, and then you're looking at basically the same interface as Windows 7 gives you. Oh well, there you have it. <laughs> it yeah, but you know, it, it's just it, some of its navigation too. I mean, things that we have just like taken for granted forever has just like done a complete disappearing act. Mm -hmm. um, well, things have to evolve, so I'm all I'm all good with stuff evolving and just getting used to it. Uh, I, um, know. Yeah, on those VMs, Nancy, how much um, RAM were you allocating to each VM? Oh God, I'd have to go up and look. Yeah, because well, I mean, right now, and and where, and you're running it on your desktop, on, on yep. or be a, okay. The only difference I, I'm running on some Dell servers, um, so I'll try. It. I've got a slightly different setup to you, um, so I'll I'll see how that performs, you know, versus your experience. So hopefully, it's good. <laughs> so we'll see this afternoon. But you know, I mean. I think we're going to run into a lot of the issues that we ran in with early adoption of Vista and early adoption oh, of Windows yeah. 7. Yeah. You know, there's going to be hard other existing hardware um, printers and whatever that aren't going to have printer drivers. It, you know, I mean, 
Well, you know, the big difference is that in those versions of Windows, everybody was excited to jump on them. I don't. I haven't heard anyone who's excited about jumping on Windows 8. I have not heard one person tell me, "Yeah, I can't wait to adopt Windows 8." And 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 in, in both previous um, operating systems, uh, it was the opposite. I, I remember myself. I couldn't wait to get my hands on Vista, and I never really had that much of a problem with Vista. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And and Larry, you're right. Larry says he goes along with Charlie Russell. Not wise to be an early adopter for actual business work data. It, absolutely. I mean, if you're if you're gung ho to want to try it, get a new machine, get Windows 8 on it, play around with it, but don't make it your primary system. Mm -hmm. So is it still optional as far as when you do purchase a new machine to either have Windows 7 or Windows 8 on it? Is that a choice or are they forcing you? I haven't. I, I don't I think. I don't. I don't think. I don't think they are because I, I saw an advert today. I think from Office Depot, and they're saying buy a new computer and then you can do an upgrade to Windows 8 for fifteen dollars. Okay, cool. So it must so come with seven to begin with. Okay, cool. But I also don't think that Windows 8 actually is going to be available until today. I think today is the day that the final release hits wherever. I know on the, the laptop that I bought in June, July, whenever the heck I bought a laptop, I could get a Windows 8 upgrade for $14. Um, didn't choose to, because again, I mean, I can I can download it from MSDN, mm -hmm. but also the fact that I really don't think it's it's something that I'm going to want to use all the time, at least not on my desktop. What I am excited about is the Windows 8 tablets, and I think I want one of them. Mm -hmm. Nancy, I'm with you. I took that out the surface. Yeah. <laughs> Looks it, good. It, Looks it, good. It does. It, you know, that's my biggest beef with that um, Toshiba tablet that I bought. It, you know, I mean, it's it's a beautiful little thing, but it, it, damn, I can't use it. You know, it not not the way that I'm used to using my desktop. And therefore, it just sits over here. And well, if it's nice, I'll—I I mean, I have Dropbox on it, and I have a lot of things that I gear over there to like go and read later. So I'll go outside and sit on the deck and take that it's and read. Kindle. But um, it, yeah, you know. But I mean, that—that that was a pretty darn expensive Kindle, and <laughs> uh, it, you know. It, it, but what really interests me is is the the Surface laptop or the Surface tablet. I think that comes out today too. That... One of them, the 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 RT and not the Pro. Uh, the, okay. the Pro is going to be the one that we can install our normal programs on. That's the one I want. Yeah. Does that come with the keyboard? Yes. It comes with a keyboard, or you have to yes. buy one extra. No, it's the keyboard is built into the cover, which was another thing. I mean, like my Toshiba, yeah, I could get a keyboard for it if I wanted to pay like another hundred bucks, and it doesn't, it doesn't snap on as a cover. Um, it's not built into like any sort of nice leather carrying case or anything. Does um, it have any USB ports or anything like that? My Toshiba? Yeah. No, I mean the... the uh, oh, the, the, the Surface? Yes. Um, full size if USB you want to ports. Catch a, catch a mouse or something like that. It, yeah. It, you know, I mean, that's where I can see that maybe Windows 8 would be all right because it, it is designed for that swipey finger action motion, um, which it, I just can't seem to master with a mouse. Yeah. Yeah, it seems that I'm just looking at it now. It's got a USB, an SD card, and HD outputs. So. 
Yeah, and and I think they're all like normal size, so it's not like you have to buy anything special. Well, is yeah, there a full, full size. Is there a hard drive, or is it just something solid state that is built in um, for storage? It, it's got a hard drive, fairly decent sized hard drive, and um, a good amount of RAM. I mean, I was actually I was actually surprised. So it sounds like a portable with the touch screen. It, yeah. It, Two and, gigs and, of RAM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and and that's what they're saying is that that they're really going to give like the um, ultrabooks and and some of the other small laptops a run for their money with this. Yeah, storage it comes in thirty two or sixty four gig. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Now the RT is like five hundred bucks, which is comparable to what I paid for my Toshiba, and I think the the, the Surface Pro is going to be right around the same amount of money. But that one's not. Um, they haven't like released a whole lot of information on that one yet. It's just like available soon. Yeah, they. That's they, what they, I got. Yeah, just coming soon. Yeah, the pro yeah. The, the pro takes you up to one hundred twenty eight gig. So um, it, disk space to come with Wi-Fi or yeah. can you get 3G or 4G with it or uh, it's Wi-Fi A B uh, G and N uh, with Bluetooth on the Pro but it doesn't say anything about um, uh, you know connecting through your cell phone sort of thing. so you would basically just a software you just download from the internet then yeah. mm -hmm. uh, OS runs current Windows 7 apps Okay, so I'll run, uh, yeah, the, the, at least the Pro anyway, I'll run Windows 7 apps. Yep. Yeah, they're saying on the Pro version that anything that you run on your com on your main computer or your laptop, you can run on that. So, so I'm wondering if you could run QuickBooks on it. Not that, not that I'd want to try and do it <laughs> 2013 on a little 10-inch. <laughs> you know, good God, Small. I'm blind enough as it is. <laughs> Get a magnifying glass. But, oh, yeah. I do like the keyboard attached to it. it yeah. Nice. Actually, the and, and the, um, the the Pro version it comes with a uh, an i5 processor um, yep. and four gigs of RAM. Um, but you've also got on the the outputs, yeah. You got a mini Display Port output, so you know you could run it uh, QuickBooks, you know, connected to a um, a monitor, you know, so you could have it on a bigger monitor through the yep. Display Port. I want to show you guys the product that I recently saw that I love. I'm actually looking for it on the. Uh, Verizon site. Is it the Galaxy? No. Mm. No, That's it's not it's quite so mainstream. Um, That's what my contractor guy just went to. The Where Galaxy? I mean, that's what everybody... I'm always worried about the thing that everybody wants. <laughs> well, that's the one that he grabbed so that he could do his QuickBooks online. Really? It's called the Intuition by LG, and I just love this thing. It's sort of like somewhere in between a phone and a tablet. Here, I'll post the link. You may need to be logged into a Verizon account to see this, so let me know, and I'll just get a screenshot or something. Yeah, but this thing just looks so cool to me. Oh, yeah. Yep, it, it wants, like, Here, set let me my show location, <laughs> log in. Who am I? Give me your first uh, just, just, child. Just, just, just put your zip code in there, and it yeah. pops up. Okay, yeah, I see it, yeah. Wow, I just locked up. That was pretty scary. There you go. Here, it's this guy. I've got it on my screen. It looks okay. kind of chunky. It's big, but I don't mind that. I, don't, I, I like, the, to and me, big is... you use it with a headset. What? You use it with a headset. Yeah. Well, it's like a phone, traditional <coughs> phone. Five-inch display. My <laughs> That's what I like. It's, like. it's like a huge phone. And I don't know that you have to use a headset. I think, you know, I think they're just trying to probably upsell you to get the headset, too. Five inches is pretty wide in your hand to have to kind of hold and talk into, I'm thinking. Oh, I have big hands. <laughs> okay. I'm a petite girl, so. And that's as far as I'm going. <laughs> so, there you go. 
It's running Android, so... Uh-huh. That's okay. I'm a Droid person. I like Android because I like the way it integrates with all my Google stuff. Yeah, they're not as pri priori... Pri pu pu I can't speak. Proprietary as other people. Yeah. Has anybody seen the mini iPad or looked at that in person? Not yet. Just on TV. I was going to go to the uh, Apple store and have a look at it, but we got a chance. Yeah, I thought I'd do that maybe this weekend. Hey, this and on that cool. note, it's time to wrap up. i got to cool. get out of here. Well, this is fun today. Hmm. It's fun every Friday, but... Always something new. Absolutely. I look forward yep. to Friday. So have All a great right. weekend, cool. everybody. Yeah, I want to start doing more like screen sharing type like stuff and just really looking at things when we do this each week. So I'm going to try and do that. I want to take a deeper look at zero intact and wave accounting too. So I think at least I know I'm going to be spending some time on that stuff this week. Yeah, the thing about wave accounting, the documentation is pretty sparse, so it sort of assumes you just intuitively know what to do. Right. Well, then that's where that Steve. Then that's a perfect opportunity for somebody like me to go in there and learn it, and then teach it and charge for teaching it. So we have to get Hartley on this and have him bring in his his comments on Wave. I know he's used Wave before. He's a Who? super user. Hartley, Hartley Singer. Okay. That's all he uses. He's he's a Wave guy. He's got his clients on there because it's free. You don't have to pay. So, anything yeah, more. we need to have him in on the Hangout. So Hartley, right, so. you're listening. I'll, uh, I know he does watch these usually afterwards. So, and plus, I'll I'll hit him up directly and say we need you in the hangout to, to tell us about Wave. So, Sweet. plus maybe I can get if if I'm really lucky, maybe I can get the CEO, the guy Scott, who was at the conference, to uh, do a Monday night interview with me. That'd be yeah, that would be cool. If Which reminds me, I do have an interview coming up this Monday that I want to mention because it's going to be Smart Vault. I'm going to have the CEO of Smart Vault on. Okay. Well, nice. I'm hoping to attend. It depends if I have power or not Monday. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, yeah. lucky guys that are. Why don't you ask them about Bill.com versus SmartVault? What's the what's the benefit going SmartVault versus Bill.com? Well, SmartVault is very different than Bill.com. That's Smart what I thought. SmartVault doesn't do AR and AP. SmartVault is document storage in the cloud and attaching documents to your transactions in QuickBooks. Right. Bill.com is part of that, though, don't they? Bill.com, like when you're using them, you can, you'll can you have your bills attached to the transactions, but they're not attached directly in QuickBooks. I have to go out to the web to see my documents. Okay, so they're in QuickBooks, Bill. in, in uh, Smart Vault. So, yeah, Smart Vault, you know, QuickBooks has its own service where you can attach documents, but they went kind of backwards, in my opinion, where they had it in the cloud, then they moved it local, so that now if I use the native uh, uh, document attachment feature in QuickBooks, it's just creating a shortcut to that file on my local computer's yeah. hard drive. Um, Smart Vault actually attaches the document to the transaction and it resides in the cloud mm. so that wherever I am, I can get access to it. So do they interface with shoeboxed.com? I don't know for sure, So, okay. but we can find out Monday night. All righty, let's find okay. out. All okay. right. Okay. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.